Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the American Dream. This week we have two very interesting guests with us. To my immediate right is Pete Capano, who is president of IUE CWA Local 201 and Watt 6 City Councilor. And to his right is Jay Walsh, who is vice president of IUE Local 201 CWA. And uh, Jay is the Ward 7 City Councilor. Uh, before we begin, I just want to say we were talking earlier off camera about the extreme generosity of Lent people to help the fire victims from that fire in West Baltimore Street. It's just an amazing story. I mean, they, they got more donated goods than they really needed, and uh, it's wonderful. And then it speaks to the generosity of the people of Lynn. Yeah, it's an incredible turnout yep. um, from the get-go right away. Right. Uh, people just started showing up there. I was there for a little while during the day and couldn't believe how much stuff had already Same been here, there. Yeah. That was early in the morning. And by the end of the day, uh, you know, they're still sorting clothes actually right, right now. Right. Yeah. So uh, the unions do quite a bit uh, on their own uh, to help the people of Lynn, besides representing workers at GE. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Uh, I mean, so the workers at GE and the union, they, they're involved in a lot of different groups in the city. You know, we have veterans groups that work with the General Electric Company and our union members that donate care packages uh, to different uh, people in the service. There's uh, the Good Neighbor Fund that's been around for a number of years that, you know, we have a lot of involvement in and giving money to like the Salvation Army and different organizations. So oh, throughout the year, there's a lot of um, involvement behind the scenes that the union and its membership has been involved in. Good, the Good Neighbor Fund actually has a committee, right? Correct. And people who work at GE volunteer to have money taken out of their pay Correct. every week, is it every week? Yes, yes. weekly. Okay. We so the they have a sizable amount of money mm -hmm. to give away. I mean, they don't always give it in large donations, but if, if they give you money, that means that they favor you, and then maybe you can get some money from corporate GE. That's the way I understand that's, it. That's, that's true, yeah. yeah. And, and aside from that, with the board meets monthly, and we've probably given away hundreds of thousands of dollars over the last few years. The uh, union board. The union board, yeah. yes. Uh, to a local 201, to the right. boys club, uh, um, uh, Leo, um, any number of organizations uh, in the city. Um, and it's never really a dispute. We're it's pretty, pretty generous. Right. We hold a uh, children's Christmas party too at St. Mike's, uh, and there's people in the neighborhood that are invited to come. Uh, you know, they fly in the neighborhood there, and kids come. We try to be involved in an active group activities committee that uh, is pretty involved in the city. Speaking of Christmas, Jay, you are the chief organizer <laughs> of the Christmas parade. Yep. Yep, I am. And I understand it was very successful. It this was year. great. It was great. Yeah. We had a great time. I think I think everybody had a great time. Got to uh, do it for. It was our thirtieth year this year. Wow. Um, Thirty years. Uh, I was about six years old when uh, they started the parade. So <laughs> dating myself a little bit, I guess. But it, it's something we love doing. Uh, really, really enjoy doing it. I think the city enjoys it. Yeah. The people I that think participate. So too. Uh, you know, it's a testament to see these people put their own money in for floats and the donations that do come in. Um, and it, it's something I look forward to doing for a long time. Yeah, and you had a couple of engagements that came we out did. of the parade. We had this two year. wedding proposals. Yeah, one on Holy <laughs> Street and one on uh, Linfield Street. Oh, they that's actually called me within the first like 15 minutes of each other. I thought they were the same people calling for another person, but yep, they went successful. Um, so it's things we like to do. It keeps people involved. It's a memory now for right. them. Right. You know, it's gone generational. You right. Get a lot of children. Yep. So the, the children it. that started watching it. You know, back when I was six, let's say, they're now bringing their children, much right. like myself and right. my daughter. She participated. Yeah. So, okay. So, on a more serious note, what what about uh, job training? What's the union doing about job training? Well, there's there's a real skills shortage in the area, um, and uh, we what we try to do is you try to promote awareness of the uh, lack of vocational skills. Uh, in the area and you know we have community win in need of good paying jobs and there's a lot of employers uh, around here who would hire skilled labor if uh, if they had the help so there's a need for machinists welders uh, that sort of thing we do have 
uh, very involved in the E-Team Machinist training program uh, from the very beginning, from 20 years. It's I never thought it was. You it, started it. The union started that's it, right? That's right. Local 201 and ECHO uh, uh, a churches. group of churches yeah. in Lynn, and it's been going. We've trained uh, over 500 people uh, over the last 20 years, and uh, a what's good amount of them work at GE, actually. What's the range of pay that those workers get as opposed to people who don't have that training? It, it's, you're probably starting out as, at twice as much in a lot of cases, you know. Um, uh, if you, there's a number of instances, uh, Jay was uh, bringing it up earlier, uh, there are people that have uh, been through college and have bachelor's degrees and just can't find work and they went through the training program and they're making a lot more than they would have made uh, with their degree. So, um, it, the, the benefit of it though is um, is it the the obvious need for a good paying job for residents in Lynn. It's just a, a, a right, vacuum right. that we could easily fill if we could use Lynn Tech. Uh, we've been advocating for use of the, uh, the school. We have, uh, besides the E-Team training program, we have a community enrichment program that we work with with the Labor Council and the New Lynn Coalition to try and add skills training uh, also through that. We've had uh, an oil burner class. Oil burner. Uh, welding. welding and all that's at Lynn Vogue Tech? Yeah, that's it's at, a that's night school that's program? A night school program. That's right. And you got a significant donation from a developer. That, that's true, yes. Tell me what that's about, because that's a pretty interesting story. Okay, well, we were involved in the Washington Street Gateway Project. When I say that, I say me, Jay, uh, Jeff Crosby from the North Shore Labor Council, uh, Tony Dunn, others uh, with the AFL-CIO. Uh, pension fund. And they are the ones that funded this project. They had the basis for the funding, the the rock that they didn't fund at all. The, but no, they, not, uh, no, no, no. The housing authority has been unbelievable yeah, making I know. this yeah. project work, and uh, we got to know the developer, and uh, he was interested in some of the needs in Lynn, and we told him about the need for skills, and he donated a uh, hundred thousand dollars to the night school at Lynn Tech for the Community Enrichment Program, you know, which is very generous and very much That's amazing. appreciated yeah. for us. It's, it's a great story to tell, which people understand and people can see uh, how that sort of funding works. You know, there's a result at the end of it. You know, people right. come out and they can get a job. Is the union going to seek more national union pension funds for more housing in Lynn? Um, it, it's, we're always looking for opportunities, okay. you know, okay. to, like that. Okay. Um, you know, it, at some point, I mean, the focus is on housing in the city, but we need to look at jobs. I mean, I think what right. me and Jay yeah. talk about uh, uh, the need for jobs in the city. Right. And, you know, living wage jobs that people can afford to, to you know, rent an apartment in the city or, or own a home, if that would be, yeah. you know. Well, one benefit of, of the housing thing is that you get union jobs, the, you know, right. good paying jobs That's right. to build the housing. That's right. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, you know, if you could, you know, if we do have people with money coming into the city, you know, it's a good opportunity to try and talk to them and tell them about the needs of the city. And, and we would be advocating for uh, more funding for vocational training for Lynn residents. You good. Know, you know, a lot of Something that's really lacking. Seen that people they, they're not they don't have the skill sets to get out there in the workforce um, where if they'd gone to a trade school maybe in high school and were building on that originally that they, they feel like they need that opportunity now because it didn't work whatever it was previously going to a college or whatever um, and now they're coming back and you need to be able to give them that opportunity to, to reach out and find a better job skill you know okay so let's move on to uh, city council jobs. Is there anything else you want to say about the union before we move on? No, I, I just wanted to say, just to emphasize a point, because it, it sort of intersects what we do on the city council and the jobs okay. thing. I mean, for the first time in many, many years, GE is doing a significant amount right. of hiring, you know, uh, probably over 200 people. And so we're, we came to an agreement with them a couple of months ago. So so now the problem is filling the, these jobs they they don't they're not getting the applications that they had hoped for machining and that's so it'd be a real shame we're going to couldn't fill that uh you know that void so you know. how does one get an application 
tell our viewers so, so if anybody's looking for jobs. So to get high, to put an application in a resume at GE, you got to go to gecareers.com, and there are job postings with uh, different uh, numbers for the jobs online there, and you have to apply solely uh, through the computer. It's all done through there. There's no more paper applications. Okay. Um, some of the jobs that they're looking for, example, is a skilled machinist job, uh, which you know means you can you know operate machinery, you know machinery, cutting pots. Uh, read blueprints, shop math requirements. Um, they're looking for uh, welders, like you know, manufacturing type welding people, so they can apply right online at gecareers.com. Uh, are you guys involved in the hiring process with yes. GE, and yeah. how how are you doing that? So you, what we've been doing is someone from the union has been at the interviews typically, and kind of going back and forth uh, with the company on trying to get the skill set that we need in there. And, and you're trying to encourage places for them to even go and look for people that they need to hire, whether it's through the vocational schools um, or it's through reaching out to just resources in the community that we know. Um, and, and, you know, th one of the things that's also happening is GE's got such a hiring, uh, you know, they're hiring so many people that some of the smaller businesses are being affected through that. So there's going to need to be replacements for the businesses that are, you know, losing yeah. help, if you would, you know. So there's try to we need the skill set from people and it's a good opportunity to get involved so they have the need for vocational schooling and the need for you know an increased look at the school and what the school needs would be a push that I'd like to do in Pete you know as not just being in the union but also on the council too right okay so you uh, you're trying to get the skill the skilled people or people to, to apply what if they have questions Do they call you or they call GE or could you ask the computer a question? I yeah, mean, I, you that's know. a problem yeah, with a problem. Uh, online. It makes yeah. it easy for, right. for them, but there, there are, uh, we, get a, we get calls every day. We try to help people you know, yeah. uh, at, at the hall. One, you know, one of the problems uh, that we found was typically good machinists and people who are uh, you know, trade school people or people that are working with their hands a lot aren't the best at writing resumes or probably don't know how to write a resume. And right. GE is looking you know, solely at the application because that's what they go by. And if it's not filled out 100% the way that they need for those job criteria, they're being overlooked in some respects. So we've had some help with making sure that the people, um, you know, filling those out correctly. I know Tony done at the E team when he has the E team graduates there, part of the classes to teach them resume writing and interviewing skills. So do you help people f for these new GE jobs with those? People will call yeah. us on occasion and ask, what are they looking for for, for skilled, you know, basis, right. and we help on that type of a of a situation with them and try to help them get through that process. That's great news for the city of Lynn. I mean, yeah. good jobs, yep. good benefits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what else are you doing in the city council? Well, we got a lot of stuff going on. We, uh, it's, it seems like it, it's busier and busier all the time. Um, Before we uh, get into that, yeah. give our viewers a quick overview of how the city council works. You guys are ward councillors. The, there are seven ward councillors, right? And then four councillors at large. Mm -hmm. Majority rules every time you take a vote. That's right. So if you want to do something in Lynn, you know, if you want to make a proposal, strike an initiative to, to build a new street or what, do anything, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Uh, there's a number of ways, depending okay. right. on what the issue is. Um, uh, more and more, you know, I, I would call the, the law office, you know, and okay. tell them what I would like to do and make sure that uh, everything I do is legal, um, everything is posted publicly, and uh, and people are informed about what what the issue would be, you know. So, um, and then uh, try to advocate for your position. You know, we have but subcommittees. What you, in the, the legislature, we call those bills. Mm -hmm. what do you ordinances. Call them? Ordinances. ordinances. A proposed ordinance. Yes. At Pro first. That's right. And it, right. And you, it, does it go through committees? Yes. Do we have an ordinance committee? Uh, right now, we're working on a. Uh, uh, we had uh, Jay and myself have, pro have proposed a zoning ordinance uh, in the city. I mean, what we're finding is there. Uh, more and more proposals for 30 and 40 unit or larger um, buildings, uh, yeah, 90, 90 even, units. you know, and smaller congested neighborhoods, you know, and, you know, one of the things the city, you know, uh, I feel, and I, I think we've discussed it, is what we really need is an urban planner, you know, a city planner, but, I mean, because to put a huge, 
unit on a, a, in a, a neighborhood where there's you know mostly single families and way too many cars you know by right is just not right so we'd like to have some say and change uh, the zoning so people we're not saying that you could never build a unit like this but we'd like to have some say and have somebody stop and and look at it and that would be us since we don't have an urban planner to look at uh, to, that would involve you know neighborhood input and, and look at traffic and parking and that sort of thing we'd like to take a time out and be able to look at some of these projects before they are built yeah you know how would you get a plan out for the city of Lynn? We'd have to propose it to have it put in the budget. We'd have to advocate for it, and people would have to understand that you know the need for it. You know, and there's there's some disagreement, you know, on whether we need one or not. You know, I I, I think that um, nowadays with things, you know, with traffic and uh, people are moving back to urban areas from the suburbs and we have transportation problems you know we don't have a blue line to lend we have uh infrequent bus bus service we don't have good bus stations so you need somebody that can put together uh, uh a whole proposal for what the future would look like down the road if you were going to increase density in certain areas how who is going to look at the traffic implications can we have a neighborhood or an area meeting that help decide what the future of this particular area would look like down the road and how can we plan for that you know and anticipate what the problems uh, uh, might be down the road and what the solutions for those might be there are people that have backgrounds and do this and most of the cities and towns around here have uh, uh, a city planning department or a town planning department we don't have that in Lent you know I just think we need we need that so Without that, we have the zoning change, you know, that we're, we're trying to do. Okay, so uh, is the council going to propose that a city plan to be adopted for the city of Lynn this year? Yeah, so that this would coming be, fiscally, that that would be, be proposed by, uh, you know, one of the, or two uh, of the city councilors, and we'd have to try and make an argument for it, and, and, pro and also as part of the pro proposal w where the funding would come from it's something that would save a lot of money down the road and uh, you know you, you spend a little bit now and you're looking good in the future that would be the argument you know that you'd have to make yeah okay so what else is going on in the city how do you like the council Jay you're, you're I like on, it yeah I like it yeah I'm enjoying it good it's uh, got a good group of people that I work with uh, yeah. you know I'll get some people give me some guidance and learning the ropes on certain things and just like you said how does something get proposed you know even I've been learning that over the last year you know how do I you know have this put on the agenda or how do you you know wh who do you call for this or that whether it's the legal department um, I'm the chair of the licensing committee so there's been questions about different things people want to do in the city and you know I have to have an answer for whether we can do it or if it's legally to do it or you know not so I'm, I'm learning that navigation of it uh, in the last year. Good. Yep. And you're, you're not the dean of the council, but you're no, getting No, yeah. no, 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 that's uh, uh, Mr. Colucci from Ward 4. Right, He's okay. Dean of the council. <laughs> so if, if you were going to look to the future and say, I'd love to see one or two things happen in the land, what would those things be? Um, you know, so uh, there's, there's the world as you would like to see it, and then the world as it is, right. you know. So uh, for me, myself, there's, there's a couple things here. Um, Go for what, it. what I'd like to see, and, and the wards are different. Right. Ward 6, is, I got a lot of businesses, a mixture of businesses yeah. and residences. I, uh, there's there are similarities, too. There, there are. Yeah, so I, I, would, I would like to see... Uh, um, I'd like it so if we could attract businesses here. I, I think we spend a lot of time uh, with housing. I think we need to spend more time trying to attract employers here. So people that are living this, we're trying to attract money from the outside, you know, with market rate housing and, you know, luxury apartments and all that. But I think it's time that some of us have to step back and look at what, what are we doing for the people that are living here actually right now, you know. so. What would that be? 
um, on, on a simple, uh, like it, if there's a pothole that it could be fixed in a day, or a street light out that someone shows up uh, right away. And some of the streets are in bad shape. And I think the city does what they can, but we need to attract uh, some revenue to be able to uh, uh, service the city better. Um, and just a quick thing with the vision thing for what you'd like to see down the road. You know, I, I think that um, we have this, this, this is one of those wacky kind of things that you, you I always wondered why the win-win the city of sin. Everybody looks, back, looks at that and says, oh, we have to change our, uh, you know, we got to change our perception. I was in, uh, I was on a mountain in Switzerland, and so and said, "Win, win the city of sin." I used to say, "Why don't we just go with that?" You know what I mean? If you if you got a marketing firm and ask them to get out uh, uh, to get out there and get this phrase out there to get Lynn on a map, it would cost a gazillion dollars to get Lynn Lynn the city of sin out there. It's already out there. You know, you could really play on that. You know, we need a uh, medium-sized entertainment venue somewhere in the city. The city hall is terrific, but uh, a, a medium-sized entertainment uh, facility, and that would spawn little places here. You could use that theme, I think. You know, so 10 years down the road, that would be something. The other thing I'll say, and I want to take up all, all the time mm -hmm. here, is with an urban planner, there needs to be uh, a focus on transportation, uh, bike, bicycles, uh, uh, bus routes, you know, when you're waiting for a bus, you're not getting drenched by rain to make it more accessible and that, that sort of thing. So if you're going to have an urban environment, you, you have everything that should, go, uh, that, should, that should go along with that to support that in the future. And that's, what, that's what I would like to see. I would like to see a little, little bit more vibrancy and we're heading in that direction, but um, uh, we're not quite there. And that, that's a possible theme that some people with uh, higher pay grades with me, I think, should, should be able to work on. So. To go back to one point that you made, uh, you need to attract more revenue. How? So, so one of the things is when, you, when you're building uh, and you're successful, um, of course, there's tax, more tax revenue to the city, you know. So I, and, and hopefully that will continue. There's some projects being proposed on the waterfront, you know, and, and that will help. But also uh, we need to start looking at employers because employers can pay, uh, you know, take up a big chunk of that, you know. And with uh, employment opportunities, and I'm talking about manufacturing opportunities, comes all the side benefits like the trucks that deliver, the little restaurant that's gonna get more business all that type of stuff. Um, um, you know, I think uh, a meals tax in Lynn would work if there, was peop if there were people making enough money and they weren't, you know, there weren't so many people w uh, living on minimum wage, it wouldn't be that much of a burden. So that, you know, everything multiplies on itself, you know, and I, I think that's one of the ways we have to start looking. You know, and once you attract that sort of thing, you know, uh, these, these properties will generate more tax revenue and would be able to help the city. Uh, before I get to you, Jay, just yeah. one other point on, on revenue. Uh, what about people who apply for grants? Do we have enough people in the city of Lynn who are applying for grants for various departments, or do we need more? And how do you pay for those people? So, you know, part, to, to get a grant, you could hire someone to write grants. What you really need is somebody that understands if you have a focus, if, say uh, I was talking about an urban planner, say you took right. one area, McDonough Square, and say this is what I want to do with this area. Uh, we had neighborhood meetings, we've had inputs with the businesses and the residents down there. This is what a uh, future looks like in 10 years. This, 10 years, this is what I like to see. So you hire somebody that understands uh, the grants that are available for that particular purpose. And uh, do we have that? No, we don't. But the, there are people out there that do that. So it's not somebody that can just write a grant, somebody that understands the, the particulars of the, each particular issue, because there's grants out there for everything. Right. You're suggesting grant person for an, on an ad hoc basis, mm -hmm. like the McDonough Square, yeah. and once that's done, then that, that grant person is done. 
that that you could do it that way. It, but you could take the reason why I use McDonough Square is Inter like I no, said it's an earlier, we, we spend a lot of focus on the downtown and the waterfront, which I've supported everything. But we need to start branching yeah. out into different parts of the well, city. Well, you guys are Westland guys, and you're trying to protect your turf. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you notice it more. You know. You know. I, I you said know. to Pete today, I was driving to work, and I said, "Hey, you know, Pete, Summer Street needs to be paved over there." You know. So when I say there's a lot of similarities bad. between our wards. You know, I think there's sure. a lot of crossover between Ward Six and Seven because we inherently travel through both of each other's wards. And, and there's a lot of similarities with them and issues. And I think Pete's covered a lot of what like the vision would be for where we would want. What would your vision be? I, I would like to see more of a, of a, of a um, you know, the quality of life issues being dealt with for people, you know, whether it's the pothole or if it's going to be the tree that's in front of their house. You know, I, I would really like to see. I think I think as people living in the city, their issue is that. They come home from work, you work 12 hours a day, you're tired, you know, pay taxes. you want to pay taxes, you know, and then all of a sudden you trip over the sidewalk in front of your house. Inheritantly, you're going to say, w what's going on? Why isn't this fixed? And, and you know, I, I, I've been there. You, know, you come home at night because you work 12 hours and, you know, you got, you got to go to something else and, you know, that the tree in front of your house is still banging on your roof, right? So those are the issues I think the majority of the people in our city are looking at as their issue. You know, some of the bigger issues would eventually trickle into being their issue, but the everyday quality of life things that I'd like to see really, you know, addressed in a little bit more timely uh, manner. The DPW does a great job with, with the resources they have. They've been very responsive, but they could, they could use more. You know, there could be more help there. So okay. We're going to have to wrap this up. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I just appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to come Thank on you. here, Jim. Well, I'm glad you came on, both of you. You did, yep. did a good job, and, uh, and you do a great job for the city. People, in case you don't realize it, these guys are out every night of the week trying to help people, going to events and spending money out of your own pocket, and uh, so everybody appreciates that. Thanks. So I, thank I just want to say, too, that a, a, a lot of the councilors do the same thing. Oh, I know. A lot I'm of work I, I behind know that. the scenes that people don't even know about, and they, you know, they do a great job. And, you know, although there are disagreements on the council, I think we work Absolutely. really well together. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah, we don't have time for disagreements. Too many problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. All right, Jim. We'll do this again sometime. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank All right. You. Yeah.